Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind, so if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazylifepodcast, and, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number, or um, go to nami.org, or um, whatever resource you can find. But just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. And try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you uh, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And uh, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you going to blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. What's up or how's it hanging? I'd like to buy this world one last drink Life sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds Welcome to another episode of The Crazy Life. I'm uh, Brian. Joining me is, well, can't really even say <laughs> usually. Barely. He hasn't been here in like six years. <laughs> Heno is back. Hi. But Jen decided she's too good for us and has yep. no interest in talking to any of you this. No, I'm kidding. She's uh, she's helping her mom get settled in because her mom's back up, as she's talked about over the last couple weeks. So, you know, that's awesome. And I'm sure... Aside from the frustrations of just, you know, dealing with moving stuff around and whatever, I'm, I'm sure she's really happy about that. Because, like she mentioned before, she's very close to her mom. So I know it, you know, makes her very happy to have her back uh, closer to her on a regular basis. Even though, I don't know, hey. man, you know, as life goes on and you're like, wait, you move from Florida back to Michigan or Ohio. <laughs> yeah, it's usually the opposite. <laughs> yeah. You, you going the wrong way. <laughs> but understandable. You know, all your family's here. So that's it. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. You'd be like, hey, you can just come visit me. <laughs> I kid, I kid. But anyways, yeah, hopefully we'll have a, a full strength roster next week. And if not, well, um, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully we will. But I think so. Anyway, I think we both know who's got to go first here. Exactly. So, yeah. so how have you been? I know it's been, how long has it been? Like, we skipped a week. Yeah, we skipped a week. And you weren't here last week yep. when we did a show. Was there another episode, or has it just been that 
that amount. I certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it a catch up? Because then I was I'd missed the week before. Yeah. Because of a band. Oh, because oh, I don't know. Yeah. And then we had Adam on too, and. Because yeah. I wasn't on the week before that, whatever. Right, God, and I, I'm a flake. I know. <laughs> I know. Last week you said it was a like a late call into work. So, so yeah. It, well, it's one of those ones where so we have an answering service, mm -hmm. and that's and we rotate being on call. Mm -hmm. So two of us are always the number one on call for two nights. No, three of us are like that. One one guy does one night on call, and then we all typically also do two nights as the second. And so, I wasn't. I'm not even the second on Wednesday. I'm the second on Monday and Tuesday. Mm. But, and what this was, it was a call from the health club straight to me, oh. which they're supposed to call the answering service. Oh, okay. But because of all the work that I've done with the health club on the COVID stuff, I was like, okay, well, maybe – I mean, usually Derek calls me on the cell phone, but I must answer. And sure enough, it was one of the front desk people. They just called my cell phone right away, which – you know, and and so I let it I let it hit my voicemail because mm. I'm like, I don't need to do this. And I, we're, it was literally – I was just finished eating, and I was going to jump on. And so I listened to the, the voicemail, and I'm like, crap. <laughs> I, knew, like, I knew exactly what that is and and then it was a decision of do i call them back and tell them to call the answering service <laughs> like like i it was amazing the contemplation i put in right before just saying yeah i just i'm just gonna go up there yeah and sure enough yeah so it was it was we have had this issue with the health club with bad copper pipes where it blows these little pinhole leaks mm. And I mean, they are tiny, tiny sometimes where you go, you, there's water in the ceiling, right? There's water coming everywhere Yeah. and you poke your head up there and you're looking around and you literally can't see a leak until you move your face in a way where the little stream hits you in the <laughs> face. And then you're like, okay, wait, wait, I think I just got hit when I was right here. And then you move your face again. Wow. You're like, oh yeah, there it is right there. You got to get your hand on it. Right. And, but because of that, it's actually kind of cool. We can quickly just wrap it in rubber. Right. And and put a hose clamp on it. And yeah. actually it, it'll it'll seal it fine until we can replace it. And mm -hmm. the, the unfortunate part is what we've learned is that because we would then fix one section of it and then then a two feet past it would then spring a leak. Yeah, sure. And so then eventually we just started replacing all the pipe. And at some point we're gonna we're we haven't done it yet. I keep saying again one of those things where it's like, Hey, maybe we should just replace all the pipe. Right. <laughs> Because then this doesn't happen. So evidently, in behind a, it, it's, so you get a, we have a, a indoor pool that has you know a quick shower you can use for the indoor pool, mm. and the entire wall is twelve inch tiles, and there's just water coming out from underneath. Oh, geez, <laughs> it's just pouring out. Now it it's not going to damage anything, mm. but still, it's like well, it's still behind a wall. Can't you just call yeah, it a waterfall kind of... feature and just move on? <laughs> yes. Seriously. Because it's it's an indoor pool. Yeah. There's a drain that goes all around the pool. The water's right. going to drain away. Yeah. You know, and, and there's like, all right, well, what's behind this? Because then, I, you know, it might be an office on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I go around and that's where I'm like, wait a minute, what's behind this? I can't. Oh, that's a concrete wall that's behind this. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> But managed to uh, at least cut some drywall above it, and then under and yeah, it was it was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it felt good, and great news. I'm getting a raise. Nice. I haven't had one since 2007. Really? The first year. Yeah. The wow. first year I, 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 I got my job. I, I got there at the end of 2006 and I got a raise at the end of 2007 and I've never had one since then. Now it was a pretty freaking substantial one. Is that why and, you haven't had another one essentially? Well, yeah, I or, pretty okay. much got raised. You know, when you're, you know, when you've got like the bracket of, of what you're worth Yes. and you hit the ceiling of right. it. 
and and I just hit the ceiling. And okay. I never thought I was like when I got hired and I got hired for the amount that I got hired. I was like happy, never need a raise for the rest of my life. Got a big one. Then was like, whoa, okay. Uh, you know, then I'm like, hey, if you want to take some of it back, because <laughs> I don't know if I want the pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But everything that's been going on as far as the changes that we're going to have at work, they have decided not to have a general manager. Oh, really? And they're going to take the money from that general manager, and they decided to give all the – what they realized by interviewing all the employees is that they have some highly qualified people, and 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 a lot of them need to make more money in order to keep them. Okay. And I, and I was very happy to hear that decision. I guess there was some really strange things where certain people that didn't know how much their own employees make didn't know, which I found to be odd. That's a very opaque thing Yeah. Um, as management. I, but we're getting rid of the general manager, so that's not going to happen ever again, I guess. <laughs> so what they're going to do, they're going to – one of the possible ways to go was you either, you either get another general manager or you just go with a property manager, someone to just – and and then we run the property, the facilities, and that's what they've decided to do. They've said, they said, you know, and it was funny. My my boss sat down. And he said, you know, basically there's going to be no bosses. And I looked at him. He's like, well, and I'm like, you're still the facilities manager. Yeah. But the idea being is is that there's no. It, it, given the history of my boss. Even how he phrased it was new. <laughs> <laughs> like there was a legitimate humility and acceptance. Hmm. And I was, I was really, I was honestly proud to work for him. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Cause that's, cause anyone that can exhibit growth mm -hmm. to me is someone I want to be around. It doesn't mean it's going to be perfect growth, but as long as there's growth, this is this is the type of organization I want to be is uh, where you can have open communication and we can admit when we do things wrong and we can we can you know congratulate our, each other for when we do things right and we also support each other one way or the other. And there has been a level of communication that has happened within our scope of our maintenance crew. That has been eye opening, and, and I'm trying to be incredibly optimistic about it. Some people aren't. Some people still want to be a little pessimistic, and I'm I'm like, nope. I I want the wins where the wins are are deserved, and they are deserved right now. No matter what happens, if this attitude continues on, we're going to get through this just fine. Yeah. And the one thing that that he said is that you know you and and our concierge and myself are going to get together like once a month and figure out what we're doing. And I was just like, let's start now. Yeah. December 1st. Let's do it. Right. Let's start acting as if we need to start doing this. Yeah. And it was really wonderful. Well, if nothing and else too, I you get a, you can get a practice run before it's actually well, it. go time, you know? Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. And, and there's no, and, and I, and I, and I, and the general manager will not be invited. Yeah. Not out of any sort of spite, but just yeah. out of the fact that we need to start doing this for ourselves. Yeah. And it really, you know, like the, there's just a lot of good news there. And then, and the one thing I said, one of the issues that they had was that I should have never have been uh, a salaried employee from the get go. But now I'm like, okay, you guys are giving me a raise. You need to come up with a way of getting me back on salary because people that earn a certain amount kind of are expected to put in the extra hours and i myself feel that you know it's not that i'm obligated but i want to yeah if someone takes good care of me i want to be in a place where i can put in that extra time and even though and, it, it can be exploited it does give them more flexibility too because if you're hourly they may not want to bring you in because they don't want to pay you overtime or extra whatever whereas if you're salaried they could potentially bring you in for a little extra time and you know like i said unless it gets you know exploited it's not that big a deal hey can you blah 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 a couple yeah. extra hours or something yeah yeah sure and it's whatever, never been know? and it's something that i do already on my own right 
And and so because one of the things was I was told that I might have some more duties. And I said, well, you know, if you guys can make those duties include more supervision of staff or even if it's the title change, you know, that I'm the assistant facilities manager or however you phrase it. Yeah to get me back on salary. Plus I would love to just get that same paycheck every two weeks again. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I honestly did. Yeah. I rotate anywhere from it's, it, it's from the least would be a nine day pay period. The most would be a 12 day pay period. Most of the time it's between 10 and 11 Yeah, and not like it's a big deal, but it's still, it was nice to just know that every two weeks, boom, yep. that money's in the, in the yeah. checking account. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been the really big news for me. And also just, continuing to work and enjoy being at work and working hard and, and just learning more. There's just this openness that we're having with communication. And I've, and, and I've always been very sensitive to how things feel and things feel really good. And I hope they stay this way in yeah. my, my, my personal life, uh, at least as far as like music goes, it became, you know, kind of clear, like, okay, it's kind of go time now. I need to, I need to start clearing the things off my plate. And and one of the things that at the beginning of the month I was like, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not interested in playing and you know getting together and jamming and playing music. We got together one night; it was awesome. But I'm like, I have too much to do. Yeah. And every night I can do something. But the one thing I found is I am imposing a certain amount of balance. I am not, you know, the minute I get home, boom, I'm in editing and 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 uploading and doing the things I need to do for the band. I'm I'm coming home. I'm having my got home from work routine, whatever it is that I decide to do. Yeah. And then I'll sit on the computer for a couple of hours. I'll work and then I'll put it away. Yeah. And tomorrow's another night. It makes sense because you're treating it like you would go to work. Like, okay, well, it's it's five o'clock. It's time to go home or it's time to punch out or yeah. whatever. So, yeah, that's, that's yeah, a good point. Oh, two weeks ago, I got obsessed with something. It was I needed to. I'm basically taking all the vocals in a song and, uh, you know, and aligning them all. So they're, they sound, I mean, I have the time to do it. Why not make them as perfect as possible? Yeah. Doesn't mean I'm going in and auto tuning them, but I'm making sure that they all line up right. And, 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 you know, and if there's, if there's something that sounds a little funky, I'll grab another clip from somewhere else. Sure. And yeah. I found by the end of the week, I had done a little, I was doing more like those four to five hours a night. And now I'm going to bed at midnight and getting up at six and I'm tired. And I was like, okay, it felt really good at the end of the week to have it all done. But I said, that's not worth it. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather look, take a more sustainable approach, you know, where I don't burn myself out uh, to this. And, and so far it's been working out. It's, it's been really good. Well, good. Yeah. That's yeah. And, and that's, I, that's my win is 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 because uh, it is about allowing myself that and 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 resisting the pressure to do more and to be able to be like no this is what I have time to do and I set a plan for myself I sent an email out and I said this is these are my intentions yeah. I want to get these done by this week this done by this week and I hopefully will have m the majority of it off my plate by December first yeah. And and so you know I, I set an intention and then I'll, I'm just going to do my best and if I get it done I get it done if I don't I don't I'm you know I'll have a whole week in in California that I can bring the laptop along and and I can work I I mean I'm seriously I'm I'm doing editing yeah so you know it it doesn't matter I can th plug the headphones in and 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 do what I need to do so that's been good and yeah I'm looking forward to going home and spending time with my family and you know I'm trying to do it as safe as possible. Yeah, um, we have just everything that's going around this country w with regard to COVID is exemplified in Idaho. I mean, it's unbelievable the discussions and the choices that parts of this state make, and the other parts just completely disregard. Yeah, in in the face of death, and it's yeah. unbelievable. I'm seeing the same thing here, and you yeah. know, I know if you look at the charts. You know, Ohio and Michigan are, uh, you know, two two really high states. Um, so it's, you know, I hear you. It, it's it's so amazing how I see so many people trying, and then I see some people who sort of try, and then I'm seeing 
not as many people just blatantly disregard, but then I'll see, you know, picks from people I know or whatever, where it's like all of them out at a bar or something like that, or at a party. And it's like 40 people or 20 people and nobody's wearing a mask. They're all hugging each other. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, come on. Like these numbers are spiking like crazy in this state, (laughs) you know, like quit. We're literally four times higher than when we shut the country down. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, please, I keep just, please take this seriously and, and try to be safe. Twin, no. Twin Falls tried to do uh, – they discussed a mask ordinance, and they're, they've hit 35 percent of their ICU capacity. They're, they're just setting records every day, yeah. and there were th- – this is just what got me. There were nurses that got up there in tears talking yeah. about what they have to see families yeah. go through. Right. And 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 – like people they're they're watching people die right and and then you have someone that says i don't like masks i can't see people's see people smile and we need to see people smile yeah and it's like okay that's a that's a sentiment but it's usually just the liberty thing but this is where it just gets kooky yeah is a, a man got up to defend why there shouldn't be a mask mandate while wearing a mask <laughs> Yeah. And he said, the reason I'm wearing a mask is because my son is at home right now with COVID. He had direct exposure to someone infected, and he walked into a crowded – Yeah. Because there was no social distancing at this yeah. town council meeting. He walked into a crowded town council meeting where there was overflow people in the lobby having had direct contact with somebody. Yeah. And I just – I just was because my my one of my coworkers is 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 it a lack of education? Is it politics? And nope. I'm just like, I don't even know what to call this. Ego. It's just it's just, or not ego. It's defiance. It's just defiance because this is the land of the free. It's cognitive dissonance at a level, and it it that... scares me and bothers me how much empathy so many people don't have anymore. I I, I watched yesterday. A, a man with his baby in his hands, baby, who his wife almost died two days ago. She's pulling out of it. Thankfully, she's pulling out of it. Yeah. But she had the baby and almost died because she has COVID. Yeah. And this man is imploring people to please – the, nobody else in their family has has you know she got it somewhere out there she, yeah and and he's he, you know he's just imploring people to do everything they can. He almost was a single father yeah because of this yep. and I just and I watch that and it brings in so like I want to do whatever it takes yep like I'm looking at already canceling our Jamaica trip in January yeah I in I'm at that point where it's like well, we can go do something else. Yeah. And and I, it's wor- it's worth it to make the changes in life so that another so a child doesn't end up motherless because exactly. of a virus. Yep. Exactly. And or, I just I mean I have, I've known two two people that are in their 50s that have lost parents to COVID. And it's like, you know, look, I lost my dad when I was 27 and I'd give anything in the world to have him back. You know, but it's still the idea that, like, I don't want someone else to, I don't care who the family member is or friend or whatever it is. I I, I just, I don't want people to lose people to something that we can work on at least cutting the numbers down. You know, I, I, I just, I can't, I wasn't raised that way. I was raised to think outside of myself. You know, if you see somebody hungry, help them. If you see someone that needs something and it's within your, your, you know, power, help people, no matter what it is, if it's holding the door for them, if it's, you know, I mentioned on Salty Language this week, you know, I was at Costco, I saw a woman, you know, they had this giant bag of dog food that I was going to hop out of the car and be like, do you need me to throw that in your vehicle for you? You know, 
Hmm. And then I was pleasantly surprised that she was quite strong for, she did not <laughs> look quite, awesome. she didn't look like she, but it, this was probably a good like 30 pound bag or so of, of dog food. And she threw it like it was nothing. And I'm like, all right, good See, for you. I got you it. Know? Yeah. Cause I was, I and, and you know, it, no matter who it was, if I would have seen that man, woman, it doesn't matter. I, I would have been like, do you need some help? I do it all the time at the grocery store. If someone's reaching for something or I see somebody in those motorized cars, just little stuff like that. It's like it makes a world of difference to some people, and it's nothing for me to do it. And it that's how I look at this. It's like, honestly, the worst part for me wearing a mask isn't the heat. It, I can breathe fine because I practice my breathing techniques. If nothing else, it's a great reminder to practice breathing correctly. And I notice when I do it, I don't have much of a problem. Yeah, it could, you know, I understand when it's really hot, they suck. I, I get it, you know. But my issue, like, I have a skin condition that make, it itches like crazy, and it makes my skin dry, so it itches even more. So I'm constantly, like, wanting to scratch my face, but I'm also fighting the touching my face thing, you know. That's the hard part for me. But, oh, well, you know, I'd rather have that than COVID. I'd rather have that than hear that I potentially infected somebody else. I, I, I just, I can't. Like I said, I was raised to think outside of myself. So when this came up, it was easy for me to immediately go okay i'm gonna do what i can i try to stay away from people you know i i wear my mask <clears throat> if i were to feel sick there were, like i got my flu shot a few weeks ago you know and the couple days ago, uh after it i felt kind of wonky because you know that that can happen yeah. and i was like i'm not going anywhere even though i'm 99 percent sure this is flu shot related i don't feel right i feel kind of sick i'm staying home just in case yeah. You know, three days later, I felt completely fine. So I was like, okay, you know, uh, everything's back to normal. And then, you know, it was different. But it was like during those days where I didn't feel right, I was like, well, I'm not going out because I don't want to take a chance. So I, I, it's not hard, you know. And I'm the person who goes yeah. out the most in the house to get stuff. I'm the the front man, basically, you know. like <laughs> So, yeah. you know, it makes things a little difficult on us when I do that. But it's worth it because, you know, my mom's 73. Her partner's, what is he, 77, I think. You know, like none of us need to be exposed to this. So, you know, and I know there's a lot of people, yeah, shut up and get back to blah, blah. But this all leads to mental health and everything else, too. Everything else, yeah. You know, so, yeah, yeah I, I just, I just wish people would take it seriously for a little while. Like, let's. Let's just do our part. It's super easy. One thing I do love is locally we have like my bandmate, Dr. Tom Archie, and mm -hmm. some another one of our local – some local either health-related groups or uh, pharmacies. They can do temporary with, with uh, research or grant stuff, do temporary free testing, and they're offering free oh, testing cool. for, for – uh, or very low low cost testing right for the community and and uh, it's such it's so amazing to see this it's so amazing and it it's cuz we 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 have a shortage we when yeah. we look at our testing yeah. it's horrible it yeah. is absolutely horrible and it's so cool to see these like you know these this, these are just local people in our community stepping up and and like Tom rented out a space and and this is outside of his regular practice yeah and he's doing this, you know, and, and there's some rule, there's some various rules with how these things get done. Sure. So you don't step on the feet, feet of the big hospitals and the labs and all that stuff. But, yeah. you know, as long as you play within the rules, it's a great thing. And, yeah. and, and, you know, I, I wish it didn't have to come to that. I wish people didn't have to basically do a second job Yeah. in order to provide for our community. To, and, and it truly is. It's like, be the be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah, I appreciate and that it, that people like that are doing that stuff yeah. out there. That's an awesome service to offer to people because yeah. I do know people. I've talked with some people that seem like have some of the symptoms, and they'll be like, "Well, I'm not you know, I'm like I, I'm I'm not going in because I can't afford the test, or you can't get it, or you can't get it right. They require you to have symptoms. Yeah. And it's and, like and so the problem is you look at the numbers and see how many people they show that are asymptomatic, but being asymptomatic, you can still be a spreader. 
you know, yeah. so it's and like, and that's why we should have an overabundance of tests yeah. Yeah. so that we can be testing everybody. Now there are some studies that have come out where they, they said that the, uh, uh, some of the, some of the faster tests are basically ineffective against yeah. asymptomatic people. They yeah. tend to have good results with symptomatic people, right? but they are really well, low numbers. You know, the thing is like with any testing group, like there's going to be margin of error, right? But the more people that get tested, it, it at least puts us closer to a correct estimate of what's going on. And, and yeah, well, you know, so it, it's yeah. still a good idea, even though it's unfortunate that there are false positives and negatives out there for some of these tests, you know, and it is unfortunate both ways. But we get more accurate numbers overall. Yeah. Because of the, and that's what we want to see. We want to right. see that percentage, that positive test percentage down into single digits, right? Not in double digits where it's at right now. Yeah. And then my last thing I want to talk about, I just want to bring it up now before the end of the podcast. So it doesn't get lost. So, when I used to do Angela's awesome podcast, Angela followed, uh, started reading a book, uh, Lewis Hayes, and it was uh, Health at Every Size. Oh, yeah, right. I remember you talking about that right? on the show. Yep. And, and we talked about it a lot on the shows, and it was the Hayes method and all this stuff. And I'm on um, Instagram, and this person pops up, and she's a dietitian. And she puts up a post about this. And and I was and so I sent her a message and I said, Hey, I used to do a podcast about that exact thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, This is you know, it was awesome. And she said, Well, I'm thinking about doing a podcast about this. Oh, nice. And 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 so I was like, and, you know, any way I could help, I'd absolutely encourage you to do it and stuff. And so they've put out a podcast now about it. Oh, cool. And yeah, and what it's called is it's called Thrive at every size podcast and the themes are so much like what we used to talk about with Angela. And, and, and so I follow, um, I follow them. You can follow them on Instagram. If you just look up the, the thrive at every size and then it's, uh, Eleni, the dietitian, that's her Instagram. And she has just got such great, uh, positive stories about, you know, it's, it's so weird to just, here we did this podcast and I did, I did this for, you know, what it was a couple of years yeah. and it wasn't the primary topic, but it became a very important topic. It was a us. touchstone for sure. You guys came back to that quite a bit because it's yeah, such it, a good place of, uh, it's a good starting point for a lot of conversations or just referral point. Yeah. And it's, and it's more than just, it's more than, you know, we, it has a huge component in mental health. Yeah. You know, physical. And this is about positive body image. This is about positive outlook at, at shape. Yeah. And, and it's about countering what the culture is throwing at us. Mm. And I love following her Instagram feed because it's all these messages and great stories about like where – where you see somebody has something sweet, right? Mm. And and uh, like they went to Starbucks and they got some great treat. And she just posted this one this week and I loved it because it's it's exactly how I want to be when it comes to my little vices. And you mm. sit there and you say, you know what? I want that and I'm going to go get it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to shame myself about it. I'm going to go get that you know piece of whatever it is that yeah. that that looks delicious. Right. And she she grabbed it. She took a bite of it and she went. You know what? I don't need this, and didn't need it. <laughs> and I love that story, yeah. Because that's the part where you, where we, where we, we let go of obsessions, and yeah. and where you, you allow yourself by giving yourself, by allowing yourself that treat, by not beating yourself up, by not being guilty, yeah. And then, and 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 you realize, you know what? I didn't need it anyway. How awesome is that? Yeah. And I just love that story because so much about physical well-being is a mental game. That's so true. Yeah. And so many people have they they I mean there are legitimate disorders when it comes to eating. Yeah. Well, and, and body dysmorphia just too, food. you know. Yeah. Like body I dysmorphia I was watching uh they had on the TV tonight, they had uh, entertainment tonight and I don't know if you know who the Bella Twins are. They were, I don't. Okay, they were in the WWE for a while, 
and they okay. both they both retired now. They're they're twin sisters, and they had recently both had babies. And one of them, who was known for like her abs and everything, was talking about how she's had a tough time with her body because she always was so focused on, you know, um, you know, being trim and 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 uh, defined and everything. And she said, you know, and then they showed a picture of her in a bikini current picture. And I'm like, oh, my God, so many women would kill to look like you right now. And but it's like but I also understand that body dysmorphia can hit you no matter what, whether you're thin, big, it doesn't matter. You can be in good shape and still think you're not. And, you know, it's crazy how our brains can lie to us so much when we can literally look in a mirror. And and our yeah. brains just won't let us see what is actually there. What's actually there. So, yeah. you know, it's – and it stinks because, you know, in years gone by, before learning a lot of these kind of things and talking with some people who've had body – or have body dysmorphia and also, you know, having it myself to some extent is, you know, I would have probably been more like, oh, shut up. You're in great – you look amazing, you know. But it's like now it's like, yeah, but in her head she doesn't because for so long she was – thin and def and defined and now she sees herself as fat even though by most people's standards they would go oh god she looks great <laughs> yeah. you know but again that's why this kind of stuff is so important because y- you got to let yourself understand that this is there and and i don't know how many people i've known that have lost a bunch of weight but they still see themselves as as fat even though they're not anymore, they see themselves as the size they were, not the size they are, you know. So this is a, a good, really good topic to look into. And I, I need to read that book. I have not, but I've heard you guys talk about it enough that, uh, you know, it sounds like a book that would be really good reading for a lot of people. Yeah, because it, it, it's ultimately about quit looking at the scale, quit looking at the numbers, focus on what feels good focus on focus on what your real your true health is and not what someone tells yeah. you your health should be should mean yeah. you know and it's about letting go of some of the the standards that yeah. are applied both uh you know in just in culture and also medically yeah you know that's it's the one thing with the whole body fat in index yeah. and and well a good know, example the, i got a brother who's a, a letter carrier right for the post office so for years and years here, he's, you know, not as much now because he's, you know, got better routes. So that means he can drive around a little more. But back when he was walking all the time, he his cholesterol was higher than mine. And I weigh significantly more than him. You know, it's and he's out walking every day, getting a lot of exercise and his cholesterol was higher than mine. You know, so it's like just looking at the two of us, you would immediately look at me and probably go, well, he's got the higher cholesterol because he's, you know, the size he is. But it wasn't true. Mine actually was high, but not horrible. His was pretty high for a while, you know, so in neither of us were on medicine. So it wasn't like either was being controlled, really, you know. So and again, going back to this, like you can't just look at somebody and go, oh, they're healthy and they're not because someone his size could fall over of a heart attack and someone my size may never have that issue, you know, cause genetics is involved as well. But, um, you know, it, it, it's very interesting how for a long time that was it. You look at somebody who's 300 pounds and you go, Oh, well they're clearly unhealthy. Well, you don't know yeah. that you really don't know what the underlying things are in that situation. So don't, don't just assume someone's healthy because they're skinny and unhealthy because they're fat. Yeah. You know, because there's that, a lot of unhealthy people. And, and I remember you guys talking about it specifically on the podcast about how it may be even more dangerous for skinny people because they assume that since they're thinner, they're healthy. Exactly. Yeah. So they and may they not go whatever they want. Right. They may not go for preventative care or, you know, talk to their doctors enough and, and everything. So, uh, you know, there's that danger to it, too, that I would have never really thought about because. You know, obviously, whenever someone, you know, a doctor sees somebody and they're obese, they immediately are, well, we need to get blood work because they want to see your cholesterol, sugar, all that kind of stuff, you know. And I've talked with people who are thinner and they don't have doctors do the same thing to them. And they should. Everybody should be treated that way. If the doctor, you know, we need to see everything because we need to make sure. And they should. I know some people just aren't seeing thorough doctors potentially. But anyway. 
Yeah. So if if this is a topic that interests you, if you um if you if you go to at thrive at every size on Instagram, you'll find and like again, it's uh, Eleni E L E N I dot the dot dietitian, and I love following her Instagram account and. Uh, and the podcast great too. And it's they're short podcasts, thirty minutes. I like it. They get in, they nice. talk about what they need to talk about. Boom, moving on. Nice. And it's real. It's really well put together. They've done a really good job on it. So, so uh, it's definitely worth checking out if that is a topic that interests you. Cool. Yeah, good for them. How have that's, you been? That's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. I was. I don't know why it's like. I know that this is this is not. I mean, this is a very popular topic. They do conferences on it, right? There's yeah. th- these seminars and classes and all this stuff. So it's not like it's something that's you know unique, but it's just something that is, it's funny, was very though. personal for me for years. So. It's funny though because I think the wall that even with all of this, there's such a huge wall for this to still overcome, to be normalized. You know, well, yeah, because what do, what's what's the main images we see? Selfies at the gym. Yeah. working out yeah videos at the gym working out all yeah. about the weight and th- this or you know or the other one is is i mean i love all the food stuff too yeah um but it's basically you've got you've basically got weightlifting and food porn <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's true yeah yep exactly and exactly you know so it's yeah I, I, i'd like to see more of this which is just you know it's 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 really about the positive attitude and and it's easy one of the most difficult things that i found was and it applies to me too it's the mental part of getting into being more healthy doing that extra bit of exercise yeah. uh changing some diet or eating you know food plan stuff eating habits that kind of stuff it's even getting started on it because yeah. There's because of the mental blocks that get built up, and I think a lot of this about positive body image and positive positive mental outlook towards accepting yourself for who you are is that it's it gradually opens the door and allows you to walk in and take that next step. Yeah, and you know the, the a big key on this too, like we you want to tie this more into another way of tying this into mental health is being happy. Or, or accepting of the size you are is allowing you to live in the moment. When you're, yeah. I'm going to get yes. to this size, you're living in the future. When you're, yep. I used to be this size, you're living in the past. And what have we learned yeah. many, many times on this podcast, which is, you know, you can visit the past, but you don't, you know, don't live there. And that that's essentially what you can fall into. I'm not saying everybody trying to lose weight does, but you you do whether you mean to or not. You definitely rent space there sometimes for a prolonged period. So if you can just be happy where you are, it doesn't mean you have to be complacent there. You know, just make sure you're you know able to accept yourself at any size. That's why I've always liked the ones where, like, it shows the people where, uh, like, oh, what was that show called? It used to be on TLC. What not to wear? I remember watching that with Jen various yeah. times. And, you know, people would have all these clothes because they're like, well, I'm going to lose weight. And they were like, throw it all out. They're like, you know, if you get there, get clothes then. Like, dress your body for what you have, not for what you think you should be or want to be. Or, you know, it's like, and I understand there's financial implications, but putting those aside, the mental part of this is very much more like accept yourself for who you are. Because otherwise, if you never get to that size again, all you're going to do is beat yourself up because you didn't get there so learn to accept who you are and again it doesn't mean you have to be complacent you know if you know if if you're at a point and you want to make change doesn't mean you can't make change but also just you know accept accept where you are along the in the process so yeah and that was that whole thing that we talked about all the time about you know don't put off the vacation because you you don't have your bikini body right go buy a bikini now you've got a bikini body exactly <laughs> and go on vacation That's right yep. <laughs> and live and live your life <laughs> yeah exactly right yeah otherwise you might put off a great vacation in you know 20 years and then maybe for other reasons you don't feel like you want to wear a bikini then you know who knows <laughs> you know you never know what can happen over the years um yeah as far as like my week goes it's been pretty pretty boring really <laughs> You know, I, I went back to therapy, uh, actually in 
you know, in the office. That was nice. I got, uh, I felt a lot better after doing that. Um, it was fun hearing that, that, that interesting idea of like, when you talked about like how you felt or how you felt just being there and, and how even your therapist was like, yes, this is so much better. Yeah. Yeah. It really. Yeah. Cause she's not a big fan of doing it over the phone, but again, you know, you, you have to make adjustments because pandemic, yeah. like I said, it felt so weird though, being in an office with her, you know, like I just, especially after, you know, us going on that rant earlier, when I do stuff like this, it's like, blah, but it's like, dude, I, I had to, that's not a, I needed that. Um, because I realized afterward it's, you know, and I know you can appreciate this cause you've been in therapy and stuff too, or men's groups, whatever is you don't sometimes realize how off the road you've been until you get back on the road, mm -hmm. you know, and then you're like, Whoa, I was 14 streets over from where I should be, <laughs> you know, and yeah. that, that's where I was, was afterwards. I felt so much better. And then, uh, you know, I screwed up today, totally forgot. I had a psychiatrist, uh, telemed appointment today so i gotta Oops. call and reschedule that tomorrow <laughs> yeah i completely forgot about it um it's weird though they like when i have telemed appointments they don't necessarily send me a reminder if i have in office appointments i get a reminder so hmm. i just gotta like put a post-it note on my wall or something or my computer here so that i see it a lot I, I just got to get better about that. So that's how I'm going to change going forward <laughs> to to do what I can to prevent it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, our weather's been gorgeous here the last few days. So I've been trying to kind of push myself to do stuff because I know when it gets all overcast and blah, which is pretty much where we're going to be going forward, um, that I'm not going to have that same level of energy. So, uh, you know, I, I, I've been trying just doing different stuff, getting, uh, just getting some stuff done that I've been kind of putting off for a while. You know, it, it's whatever. It, it's not big stuff, but it's still, you know how it is. It's like, but it still is a win because it's like, well, I made a phone call that I've been putting off for yeah. whatever, you know, like yeah. let, let's see how long it takes me to call on the psychiatrist. You know, will yeah. I do it tomorrow? Will it be next week? And I'll be like, yeah, I still haven't called. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. I, I did that last week and I just did did some – I just kind of focused on the things – certain things I needed to get done around the house. And yeah. I was like, all right, let's do this. And, and I got one thing done and then, and then that really did lead me to the next thing. And then I got yeah. – and I was like kind of inspired me to get to the next thing. And, you know, did I get all of it? No, absolutely not. I still have stuff that's been waiting for weeks to get done. But yeah. I did get a bunch of stuff done and it just felt really good. Yeah. And it, and it, and it, and just even the small amount improves my chances of getting more done. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's true. Well, it, it does for me too, because, you know, when I look at the to-do list, if I had 10 things on there and I'm able to get two or three off of there, well, tomorrow when I look at it, I've only got eight things on there. The less yeah. things on that list, the more likely I am to tackle them. You know, when I see a hundred things on the list, that's why I usually do short lists, but, um, that's basically what it's been is like, you know, I need to do this. I need to do, like I said, nothing major, just little stuff. I just, just haven't had the energy or just haven't bothered to do. So, you know, it's like I said, nice getting, uh, nice getting some of that out of the way. Uh, real quick update. I mentioned before that I went to the hospital cause I needed to get my testosterone shot or when I get them, I have to go to a hospital cause my doctor's in the hospital. Um, and last time I didn't get screened or the woman didn't want to screen me until oh, I, yeah, that story was amazing. Yeah. Till I pitched a fit and then, yeah. then she finally did. And I'm glad she did because when I went upstairs, they were like, yeah, we don't do that here. Um, went in this time, they moved the, the table a little bit, which I think they're doing because that way people aren't going to have to stand outside as much. Um, and you're still not coming deep into the hospital. You're, you know, um, because it's going to start getting cold here and you don't, you know, if people are potentially sick, you also don't want to have them standing outside in 20 degree weather or something, but you also don't want to let them too far into the hospital because you want to be able to control where they're going in case they may have COVID. So, uh, yeah, but it was a different woman this time, which I don't know if that was just a coincidence or if that was because of what happened. 
I walked up. She, you know, mm. I had to look at the little cell phone size thing. It scans your forehead, you know, and 95.6 degrees, which is pretty, pretty typical for me, which is so dang weird to me because I'm always hot. But my actual temperature is almost always it's, around, it's yeah, I'm almost always around 95, 96 degrees. It's so uh. odd. Um, but, you know, then I go upstairs to the office. And while I'm up there, I notice they have a sheet uh, taped to the thing that basically says, if you haven't been screened, we will screen you here. And I'm like, oh, so they changed their policy up there, too. <laughs> so I was like, well, Ooh. I don't know if that's directly because of me. But I'm taking it as a win. So uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Either way, whether it was because of me or not, those are positive. They they made positive changes. Yep. And that made me feel because better. You said something. Yeah. Well, and it's funny too. I went to get into the elevator. You know, I hit the up button. The elevator opens up. There's like six people, and a woman's like, "Come on in." I'm like, "Nope." And yeah, I just you're like, nope. <laughs> I was like, "Go ahead." Yeah. Are you crazy? No. Again, it was like Weird. pandemic, and this is a hospital. <laughs> I don't know where y'all are going or coming from, you know, and I certainly don't want to stand like shoulder to shoulder with anyone right now, unless it's someone I know, you know, like if my brother had gone in with me, that would have been different, but the six people, nope. So I, you know, they closed the door. I hit the up button again and waited. The next elevator came. There's no one in it. I was like, there we go. <laughs> Cause I was like, well, if it takes too long, I'll just hit the stairs. Cause it's only three floors. It's not like it's that far, you know? Yeah. Um, but I was like, yeah, no, no, thank you. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah, I helped. I felt so bad. A woman on the way in, she, I don't know why, but she, whoever dropped her off or whatever, didn't like help her in. And she was in a wheelchair and she somehow got the wheelchair stuck on the curb because she didn't wheel over to where, you know how they always have like a, a ramp area to yeah. to go up. She didn't go over there for some reason. She was like half on that, half on the curb. Kind of like, you know, if you were turning around a corner thinking, ah, I, I, I got it cleared. And then you get your back tire caught, you know, up on the curb. She did that. And the tire, I don't know why, it, it, it locked for some reason. So I helped her up over that and you know and i asked her i said do you need me to you know push you inside she goes oh no i can get it i just couldn't get over <laughs> you know and i was like okay mm -hmm. well, have a nice day you know it's like geez you know and and the thing was i saw people walk past her <laughs> and it's like how do you walk past somebody that's clearly stuck and not at least say do you need a help any help i mean going back to what we talked about earlier you know it's like come on this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about every week when I'm like, be kind, do things, you know, like, I know it's a pandemic. Yeah. You don't know if she's sick. I know there's risks involved, but I still, I, I still can't go, oh, she might have COVID and just avoid her. I just, I can't, I know I should, but I can't, yeah. you know, I know really what I should do is go inside and tell someone from the hospital, let them come out and help. It's like, I'm just, I just did it, you know? So I'm sure, you know, like anything, no good deed goes unpunished. So, you know, I'm sure I'll get punished for that somehow. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like I said, I, I just I've been trying really hard to just improve someone else's life a little bit each day if you can. You know, I just there's such power to that. And I'm not doing it for the power as much like it, but it's still it just it's just a nice thing to do. Because how nice is it when someone just, you know, how many people on the internet are like, somebody paid for my coffee today, you know, just anything like that. And it's like, that's it. It's, they bought your $7 coffee, you know? So anyway, my, but other than that, my week's been pretty meh, you know, I mentioned to you before we did this, I think I finally got my dang battery situation on my laptop squared away. So I'm taking that as the big win for the week. <laughs> Cause you know, it, it's been stressing me. Even though it's not a huge deal, because it's not like the thing didn't work. It just was a pain in the butt to get it to work, you know? So, anyway. So, there you go. I think that's about it for me for the week. I really don't have a whole bunch otherwise. Awesome. So, you want to do our topic real quick? Yeah, it's a nice short topic. And the one thing I love about this topic is the person who presents this topic on psychology today tina 
Gilbertson, LPC. It, her subtitle is Constructive Wallowing <laughs> <laughs> because she wrote a book called Constructive Wallowing, How to Beat Bad Feelings by Letting Yourself Have Them. And she hosts the Reconnection Club podcast for parents of estranged adult children and offers consultation by distance. So if uh, yeah. you're interested in finding out more about Tina Gilbertson, uh, check out that podcast. Yeah. Anyhow. I'll have links to her in the show notes and stuff too. Definitely. So this is something that happened to me recently, and I'm not bringing it out to call out the person that this happened with. <laughs> this is my honest curiosity. I was tested in a relationship. And it felt weird, but I didn't know why. And I didn't understand. I knew it was something that's that it's not I knew it wasn't good, but I didn't understand why it wasn't. And I decided to do to do a little searching. And I found this really simple article in psychology today. It's short enough that I can just read it. And it's stop testing your partner, you'll set yourself up for disappointment. Hmm. And it starts with basically a little story to exemplify what's going on here. Sonia and Martin have been dating for six months and Martin has shown himself to be a loving and thoughtful partner. Sonia wants to register the two of them for a Wednesday night salsa class, but she knows that Martin plays poker with his friends on Wednesdays. Sonia is nervous about asking Martin to skip poker night, but she tells herself that if the relationship is important to him, he'll want to make the sacrifice. When she gets up the courage to mention the class, Martin predictably balks at the Wednesday night time slot. Sonia hears herself accuse him of being immature and selfish, and their first serious argument ensues. What's really going on here? Why is the salsa class so important to Sonia? It's a setup. Sonia knows that Wednesday nights are the only time that Martin spends with his friends. Why is she disgruntled when he doesn't immediately agree to drop po poker for salsa? Meaning, for her. Yeah. Whether she recognizes it or not, Sonia feels insecure. She's testing Martin. If he had to choose, would he choose her over his friends? If she pushes him and he agrees to spend Wednesday nights with her, then she thinks she'll feel more confident in his love and commitment. If not, she'll continue to feel insecure in the relationship. In forcing him to make this choice, Sonia has set them both up for failure, which is the part I didn't understand. <laughs> like, I got the idea, like, that there's instantly failure in a test because usually the tests are, are impossible tests. Right. Typically it is. You're usually – you're literally inviting someone – to pass something that I, th I think I saw a statistic on another article that 46% of, and this was just specifically women and men, that 46% of men fail the tests, sure. which means you're picking stuff that's pretty difficult. Yeah. So the next section is so important. Testing creates what we fear. <laughs> the <laughs> test itself creates what you are fearing. Martin is unlikely to agree that spending time with his friends on Wednesdays has anything to do with his love with her to her, right? Mm -hmm. For him, it's just hanging out with his friends, right? Right. He could also view Sonia's request as proof of Sonia's lack of love for him. Because why would someone who loves him begrudge him one weeknight to see his friends? Yeah. By setting up this, her word, not mine, bogus test of affection. Yeah. Sonia alienates Martin. She creates the very distance in the relationship that she fears. Do you know? And it's true if you really analyze it and look at it. It's it's interesting to me. I've never liked these. I mean, nobody really likes being put into these situations. I always hated them because I feel I see them as ultimatums. Because they, they have that. Yep. When that, you that's part of it. OK, because I was going to say, because when you look at it, you immediately yeah. like I'm an over -anal analytical person. So if someone asks me a question or something like this, I'd be like, why would you ask me on the one night, you know, I hang out with my friend like I, in my head, I'm going, what are you trying, you know, type of a situation? It's like, so if I say no, you're going to be mad at me. Like, yeah. so you're so, so what have you just yeah. done? You've literally created distance yeah. where you wanted to create connection right and i never got that yeah and it, it's it's you're basically because this stuff never works in my mind that's why to me right away i was like okay 
this this never works. Yeah. This never works. No, those situations and, never – they never – no matter which way you go, they never pay off. And that's because of the conflict that's part of it because there are ultimatums involved or there are deals involved that you're, yeah. that one person's not affa- aware of, right? Mm-hmm. So this is – if you find yourself testing your partner like this, recognize the behavior for what it is. You're trying to find more security in your relationship. There's nothing wrong with that. But setting up tests creates unnecessary conflict. Even if your partner goes along with everything you want him or her to do, slavish obedience is not ultimately what you are seeking. Yeah. Okay. So what's the solution? Those who test just want to know that they matter. Talk to your therapist about feelings of low self-esteem and insecurity. Don't let your relationship become a canvas on which you paint your worst fears <laughs> and i love that line yeah that's good because like that's that. what's happening i have a, a an insecurity a fear and i decide to turn the relationship i'm painting the relationship in my fear and i was like wow that's amazing like just that that the way of just image you know imagining that yeah. Of like, this is how I feel, and I'm just going to slather it all over here, right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? So keep your relationship healthy and positive by taking responsibility. Talk to your partner if you have a tendency to test in relationships. Perhaps your partner can help you get a handle on testing by gently checking in with you if they feel they're being put in a compromising position. And that's a great thing. Again, it's 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 setting yourself up for success rather than setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. It's saying, hey, I have a tendency to do this. If you notice me doing this, I give you permission to point it out. Yeah, because otherwise it's tough, right? Like if, if, if yeah. someone comes to you and says, and like, again, we'll use the example you're using here. You know, she comes to you and says, hey, Wednesday night, I want you to start taking – salsa class with me a lot of people would immediately go essentially on the defensive because they feel like why is it got to be wednesday like why are you yeah like you know that's my night yeah you know that's my night with whoever you know or whatever and it it kind of puts you and when you're on the defensive you're you know you're not likely that's why i was kind of using like an ultimatum situation because you're immediately on the defensive and it's like you no, you know. Oh, you're, you don't care about me. You're not willing to like, compromise. Yeah, at and, that point. Yeah, it's like yeah, because you know, it's not a like. Hey, I'd really like to take a salsa class. You know, would you? You know, blah blah blah, and have exactly. them go. And then the person goes, yeah, as long as it's not Wednesday, because you know, I hang out with blah 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 on Wednesday or something. You know, then there's room for everybody to win there, but. Yeah, exactly. And moving forward, whereas right away you're asking someone to change something. There's a negative that just right off the bat, there's not going to be any desire to even approach it yeah. when it starts that way. It's it's just fascinating when I when, when I really think about it. It's like, wow, like this doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So testers. This is the pretty much the last paragraph. Testers are not bad people. They are simply people who need understanding and support. Mm-hmm. Asking your partner to help you notice testing behavior sets your relationship on a collaborative footing rather than a combative footing. Uh, that's pretty clear. Yes. It takes courage to trade testing for an honest reckoning of your own fears, but ultimately it's a better way to win in the game of love. And I say this applies to work. Yeah. It applies to our friendships. It applies to everything. It's not just about love. It's about everywhere. I know I've done this at work. Me too. We do it in weird little ways about, you know, you you set somebody up for something, Mm -hmm. see if they're going to change something. You know, like I know that there's ways that is not about collaboration. That is about combat. Right. And I'm and I'm so happy I found this article. And the thing is, it doesn't even necessarily like you, it said in there, the person doing it doesn't it doesn't make them a bad person. It doesn't even mean that yeah. they're combative. It's but the tactic. It's just the result is combative. Yeah, yeah because it, it really is. It goes back to uh, was it a few weeks ago, a month ago, whatever it was, when we talked about. Um, oh, I can't remember the way we worded it, the topic, but it was about like communication and and how you word things to people. How basically, you know, it's like non combative communication or it was something like that that we talked about. It was about. about those 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 steps of ways of engaging in a conversation where yeah. you are you try to set yourself up for greater success yeah. than failure. And I think that really applies here because yeah. 
it, this really is a communication situation. It's it can be a control situation, but it it ultimately is a communication situation because if the person is feeling neglected or they want to be they want your feelings for them reaffirmed or whatever, there are much better ways at getting the answer you want instead of being manipulative or potentially combative with somebody, even if that's not your intention. Like I said, the wording you choose there can immediately put someone on on the defensive. And when people are on the defensive, they're less likely to listen. And you're also just less likely to get the outcome you're, you're desiring there. You know, like it said in here, you're more likely to get your fear rather than what you, you know, like, if you want them to say, I love you, don't put them in a place to where they're going to say, I don't love you, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. and that's really kind of what you're doing here is you're skewing it to where it's setting them up to make you feel unloved versus yeah. giving them the opportunity to truly make you feel loved, you know, or, or to reaffirm in that situation, you know, because it, it you know, it does suck when. Somebody puts you in a situation like that. Now, it is also different if there's other situations. Like, if you're having trouble in a relationship and you're like, hey, I can get us into a counselor on Wednesday, those things can be a different situation altogether to where it's like, hey, you know, we both need to make some sacrifices here. This person's only available on the night you hang out with your friends. Can you, you know, that's a whole different conversation. But given the scenario here, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's tough, but you're right. It's one of those situations where it's so many times in relationships. It's like it's just the problem that a lot so many times both people are not they're not communicating from the same book or from the same language. It, you know, it's true. And if we could yes. just you know, or go back to the you know, was it the uh, women are from Venus, men are from Mars concept? It's yeah, like the same thing, yeah. kind of an idea. You know that it's like. Yeah, it's like if we could just have Google Translate all the time to where when we say something, they could just hold their phone up and it would show you their true intention. You go, oh, and then be able to respond accordingly. (laughs) It would be so nice. Unfortunately, we all have to use, well, we do because English, you know, if you don't speak English, then, well, I imagine you'd have a hard time listening to this. But, (laughs) um you know, we, we're all speaking the same language, but unfortunately, sometimes it comes off as a different language. So, you know, yep. it, we got to try to find as many ways to to well, that's, be that's careful. It. And that, I think, is the key here is about uh, creating these avenues of communication. Yeah. And 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 being and being aware, being willing to be aware of your fears is the first place where growth can occur And and. Again, setting yourself up for more success than frustration. Right. And like you said, this it is great for not just uh, uh, like love, like romantic relationships, but friendships, uh, family, uh, work, you know, all these kind of things, which we've talked about a little bit on, on other episodes when we've talked about communication, about how it's so amazing how learning these tools for one facet really can be applied Many, many times in Absolutely. other relations, yeah. you just have to be able to recognize yep. being in that scenario. You know, like how many times has, has a person uh, worked for a place where they're basically testing your loyalty? You know, yep. it happens so much. And many times they, you know, things are done or or a place will do something to see if you quit or whatever kind mm-hmm. of scenario, you know, so yep. it's. Like I said, sometimes it's a control tactic. Sometimes it's not. Because I think in most romantic relationships, most of the time, I think this is not done with nefarious purposes. I think it's really just more of a show me I matter type of thing. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. it turns into a fight a lot of times. <laughs> Which is too bad, you know. Because there's probably a lot. most of those fights that could have been easily avoided just by slightly tweaking the the conversation. Yeah. So there's our topic. Yeah. All right. Well, good stuff, I believe. All right. Well, I guess, uh, if you want to continue the con, <laughs> you can, I, I'm waiting for the page to scroll down cause I forgot the first part of it. Um, 
You can contact us on our website, which is the crazy life podcast at weebly.com. You can email us if you'd like to at the crazy life podcast at outlook.com. Uh, the show Twitter is the crazy life pod where I post when new episodes go up. Uh, Jen can be found on Twitter at Jen's crazy life. And that's Jen with a G. Uh, she can also be found on her other podcast, which is called Shake the Sheets, where she talks with her co-host Nate about pop culture and various other things. Uh, that can be found at shakethesheets.com. And Heno, how about you? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. You can find me on Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Heno Heiter. And actually, it's kind of funny. I was just like talking about Instagram so much. I'm like, what the heck's my <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember your Instagram handle. <laughs> I, I totally I think it's just Slimo, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Like, I don't see you post very often, or when I do, I don't pay attention because, like, you'll post pictures of your dogs. I know exactly who it is. Yeah, I'm you at know? just Slimo, okay. which is an old email address. Yeah, <laughs> uh, go figure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, funny. Yeah, there, there you have it. You but can, it's also my name, so right. I, I have my full name on there, so that, right. that works too yeah. for searching purchases. And if you want to check out my other podcast, Moving the Needle Podcast, where we talk about movies, film, music, and other TV shows, stuff like that. Uh, let's see. What are we – oh, yeah, yeah. We just recorded Galaxy Quest versus Spaceballs. Oh, nice. And that should be out uh, – in a few days after this podcast, I, I need to get it up soon because we skipped a week. Yeah, I actually, so. uh, I, I'm actually one behind. I haven't listened to what was the last one? It was Dave versus the American President, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a. I love those movies, so I'm very curious to both both sets of movies actually, Galaxy Quest and Spaceballs, also of course. So I'm I'm very curious to listen to those. If nothing else, it's fun sometimes listening to the episodes because. It reminds me of why I love the movie so much. And there's been various ones where I'm like, I need to go watch that. Like, I haven't watched that in years or something. Like, Galaxy Quest, I used to put in all the time at the video store. Because it's, you know, I think it's PG-13 or PG, whatever. It's not, you know, there's nothing real offensive in it that I remember anyway. So, uh, you know. Super toned. Yeah, super toned down, actually. I yeah. They, it was originally supposed to be a little more racy, yeah. like Spaceballs, right? And they actually went out of their way to like I, I, I hadn't, I don't know if I just never paid attention or it just been a while, but there's this one. Literally, there's an edit where Sigourney Weaver says something that ends up being like shucks, <laughs> but it wasn't shucks. Yeah. <laughs> It kind of rhymes with Shuck. Yeah. I See, I think given the kind of movie it is, it's perfect for it to... It was smart. Yeah, I think it it, it makes sense to make it feel... Because the whole thing's essentially a spoof on Star Trek. Yeah. And it feels like it, they should have made it to where it feels like it could have been on network TV. That That's the way I always... I love that they did that because it felt like a Star Trek movie in that they would have went out of their way to not cuss or they would have come up with some, like, alien cuss word, you know, something to yeah. get them by the censors. So, ah, oh, man, that movie's so good. If for some reason people listening, if you haven't seen it, please go watch it. It's such a great yeah, movie. I love that movie. I mean, I love Spaceballs, too. I could quote Spaceballs and talk about that until I'm blue in the face, but Galaxy Quest is a brilliant spoof of a movie. So, yeah. not that, you know again, that not that Spaceballs isn't because it's a spoof on Star Wars. Wars, but yeah, yeah, but but listen to the podcast, you'll hear what we think. Yeah, but, uh, one thing with Galaxy Quest, Harold Ramis was supposed to be the director of it, mm -hmm. and he wanted it to be more of a zany comedy, you know, like more of an actual like Spaceballs kind of spoof. Oh, yeah, and and the, everyone was kind of like, Yeah, I'm not kind of feeling it, and so he moved on. Wow, they grabbed somebody else, and and when Harold saw it, he said, You know, you did it right, they did, that's the way it should have been done. I, yeah. I don't think I would have liked it as much if it was a zany comedy like Spaceballs. Yeah. I think it was yeah. perfectly done for how it was. In fact, the first time I watched it, I didn't realize it was supposed to be like a spoof. I just thought it was supposed to be a comedy, basically, you know, and that yeah. was it. And then as I'm watching it, you know, it didn't take very long, obviously, for you to realize that it's it's very much a Star Trek spoof and stuff. But, yeah, it's it's really good. Yep. I got a great cast, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, oh, amazing cast. Yeah, go listen yeah. to their episode where they – well. When it goes up, I guess, you know, <laughs> you can't right now if, well, nobody can listen to this right now because we're recording it. 
<laughs> anyway, you can find me on Twitter at StuNami. You can find my other podcast at Salty underscore Language or at SaltyLanguage.com. That show is not safe for work. We talk about a lot of pop culture stuff, life stuff. The last few weeks, we've, you know, probably had a little more real life stuff, like heavier stuff than we have in the past. We talked about voting and um, there was some uh, very much crazy life moments, um, you know, that I discussed in what one or two weeks in a row there. So, you know, it was yep. a little different, but most of the time it's just us being idiots and talking about pop culture stuff or whatever skips in front of our radar. So please go check that out again, not safe for work. So be careful. Uh, you can find this show's Facebook group on facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. We're part of the tangent bound network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. So please go check out other shows on there. Yeah, there's a whole bunch. You probably find some other stuff that you enjoy. And, yeah, as usual, you know, if you need help, please reach out. There's tons of resources out there. Um, and please reach out to your friends, you know, especially if you know they're going through a rough time. Um, also, just bonding with people is still very important right now. And I've noticed, you know, a lot of people have really kind of gone by the wayside as far as doing, like, the Zoom meetups you know, the virtual happy hours and stuff. I haven't seen anywhere near as many of those going on. So, you know, if if you're not getting the social uh, exposure that you need right now, you know, make sure you reach out to some people, maybe schedule one of those or something. Because contact is, that kind of contact is still important. So make sure you don't lose sight of that. And, you know, as I said a little bit ago, please be kind. Please show empathy when you can. Help people. Do whatever you can to make this world a better place, please. There's so much just garbage being thrown out over, you know, the news, the world. Just, there, you know, let's let's try to let's try to fight against that. You know, let's just be good people and try to help each other out. Listen to the stories of your neighbors, help them when you can, and you know, like I said, you know, don't be a jerk. <laughs> Sorry, Hanno, you want to take us out of here? Yep. As the incomparable Ty Webb said on Caddyshack, there's a force in the universe that makes things happen, and all you have to do is get in touch with it. Stop thinking, let things happen, and be the ball. He's got about 195 left and looks like he's got about an eight iron. He's, oh, this crowd has gone deadly silent. Oh, a Cinderella story out of nowhere. The former greenskeeper now about to become the master champion. It, it looks like a, it's in the hole. It's in the hole. <laughs>